Hi, it's Pete. Okay, from uh, Friday's uh, session where we were looking at, or where we talked briefly about playing with pictures in PowerPoint, I promised I'd do you a quick video on how we actually can play with pictures and a little bit of work with fonts inside of PowerPoint. So to start with, what I've done is I've created a slide here that as you can see is basically empty. So the first thing I want to do is to insert a picture. Now to insert a picture, I go to the insert menu, I click on a picture, and then here are some of the pictures that I've actually got. Now what I'll do is uh, I'll work with um, this picture. Uh, and again, you'll probably recognize this picture from this handsome chap who's uh, stood large and proud in the middle there. Now, the first thing I can do, as you can see, is I could just resize that image to make it as big uh, or as small as I want. Now, I made it fairly big to start with because of what I want to do is I want to be able to crop this so that we've only got this central uh, image of these four people here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the image, right click, and then I'm going to come down to size and position because size and position will tell me that the moment the height of the image is 18 centimeters and the width, the width is 24.72. So that gives me an idea of how much uh, I can actually start to manipulate this. Now, ideally, I would like this image to come across so it finishes around about the, uh, this guy's arm. Now, that will need me to move in from this side. And I would guess that is probably about, uh, I don't know, should we say nine centimetres from the right? So if I come across here and say nine centimetres and then click inside of one of the other boxes, ah, as you can see, my estimate was way out because I've suddenly chopped myself out. So what I can do then is I can change that. So if I go to seven centimeters and click outside again, again, not quite. So let's go to uh, six centimeters and click. Yeah, that seems about right. So as you can see already, I've now moved all of this image across. So let's move from this side. Uh, and so if we say from, this, from the left, it would be four centimeters that I want to take off. So let's click on four and then click outside. Yep, yeah, four centimetres seems about right. Uh, I want to take a couple of centimetres off the top. So if I say um, two, possibly a little bit more. I don't think it'll take two, so let's say 2.5. Let's see what that does. Yep, yeah, that seems about right. And I'll just take one centimetre off the bottom. And uh, then I can just click outside of there. And there it is. So I've now got the image. OK, and so what I want to be able to do then is I want to add one or two bits there. Um, OK, so here I can now uh, close that particular box and I can have a, a suitable message. Um, uh, so here is this guy. So what is he thinking? So what I can do is if I go to the home, I can come up to here and on my drawing tools, I've got all sorts of different drawing tools. But down at the bottom, as you can see, I've got speech bubbles of various sorts and thought clouds. So this guy, we've asked, we, he, he could be thinking something. So I've clicked onto that um, and then I'm going to draw that uh, start of that by dragging that yellow diamond up. So it's actually next to him. So it looks like it's him that's thinking. Now, I know that guy. He's never been accused of thinking before. Now, I don't like this blue color here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto my quick styles and then I can actually choose the attributes for the thought cloud that he's actually having. OK, now I'm going to go for um, a, a nice little gentle uh, purple, I think, thought cloud there because he's in a purple moment, this lad, and he's thinking the girls are looking at me. Um, and uh, having known this chap for some time, that is the sort of thing that would be quite likely to have been going through his head at the time. Now, I also happen to know that, um, or I suspect, shall we say, that the, what these girls were thinking. So what I can do is I could add um, a little speech bubble from one of these girls here. Yeah, so again, I've drawn this little speech bubble in here, say, 
uh, and then I could add in a colour onto this one. So they can be talking in green, and, and, and there we can actually sort of sort of how smug does he look? And so there we are, and there we've got one of those nice little uh, understandings or misunderstandings that always seem to occur no matter where I am. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, people thinking I'm looking, people are thinking I'm looking smug, and there's me thinking, my, come don't I look gorgeous? Okay. So there we are. We've now created that little uh, image. Now I can highlight that image. And by highlighting it all in that manner, as you can see, I've got all of the different elements selected. I can put my cursor on there and right click. Let's try again. And there I can now go to group and I click on group. And that is now a single image. So once again, I can right click and I can actually come save as a picture. And I could save that as a picture called um, Pete being smug. Oh, I've already created one of those, so we'll create it again. And there it is. So there is how we can actually create that. And so that could actually be uh, the front of a, of a, of a nice card or, or whatever that we actually wanted to create. OK, if I just touch the delete key, then that will actually uh, delete that image. Now, the second thing I wanted to have a quick look at was how we can actually use clip art. So I go to insert and I go to insert clip art. Now, because I'm online, I've got access to a, a lot of images on here, lots and lots of images. Uh, and so I can actually go onto here and I can actually start to try to find images that I want. Now, the image that I'm going to look for is a banner. So I'm going to look for a banner. So I've typed banner into the box. And then I click on to go and it will show me an entire range of different banners. And so I've got banners that I could use for all sorts of things. So there I've got a wonderful gold banner that I could actually use uh, for uh, a message or for a, a card or whatever. So let me delete that one. I've got this type of Valentiners for Valentine's Day. Um, wonderful banner. Or indeed I could actually come down here further. Uh, and there I've got uh, banners for Christmas, uh, Merry Christmas, uh, New, does that say New Year or New York? Who knows? Yeah. Oh, there we are. We've got a, a protest banner as well. So I've got all sorts of different banners that I could actually use, depending upon what I was actually trying to achieve. Yeah. So again, we've actually got all of those different types of banners. Now I'm going to come right back up to the top and I'm going to choose this simple banner to start with. And as you can see, if I pick it up, I can actually move it around. I can also stretch it. And then having stretched it, I can then, uh, because it's uh, the, the, uh, a word banner, I can just type text directly into this banner. So playing with oops, banners in PowerPoint. And as you can see, I've now got my text inside of there, inside of my banner. Now, I have to say that the text, as well as being fairly unimaginative, does not look that good. So we can play about with the text. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the text. Now, in order to make the text bigger, there are some keyboard options that I can use. And the keyboard options that I can use are on control, which is the control key, and then the opening square bracket, and the uh, that opening square bracket, control in that bracket will make things smaller. Control and the closing square bracket will make things larger. So let's see that in action. So if I choose playing with banners in PowerPoint and then I press control and the closing, uh, the, the uh, opening square bracket, then as you can see, that makes it smaller. Pressing the control with the closing square bracket makes it bigger. So I can actually play about 
uh, to get the size of font that I actually want. Now it's important to note that the font size is also dependent upon the shape of the individual characters, the actual shape of the font. Now at the moment, if we look up here where it says Calibri, we can see that the font that I'm using is, is currently Calibri. Clicking on this little arrow next to it would allow me to actually go down and to choose different fonts. So, of course, I first of all need to highlight my font, click onto the box, and then I can actually move around and I can see how the different fonts will actually make an appearance. And can you see how the size of the text actually seems to change as I move from different font to different font? Sometimes it will fit on two lines, sometimes it will fit on one. Now there are a lot of different fonts available and it will depend upon which machine uh, you're working with and what fonts you've actually got available as to what you can actually see. Uh, if you've actually got any of the, uh, if, you're, if you're a crafter, you may find that you've got a lot more fonts than I've got. But the thing to bear in mind is that you really want people to be able to read what's being said. So whilst some fonts may look very, very attractive, if you've actually got uh, a lot of text in there that you want people to be able to read, then I would tend to go for something that is fairly straightforward and fairly simple so that people stand a chance of reading your message. So there we go, I've gone for Brush Script, uh, which is a font I particularly dislike. And then I can just control, uh, I'm just gonna make that just that little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna press Control E to center it. So as you can see, I've now got playing with banners in PowerPoint. Well, the problem I've got now is that the in PowerPoint, I would like to be on the same line. So I can put my cursor next to the word in, and then by holding the shift key and then pressing enter, that will bring it down onto the same line. So that I've now got a heading and I can move that around to say playing with banners in PowerPoint. Okay. Um, so there we've got uh, a couple of the ways that we can actually create and play with uh, text and images in PowerPoint. The final thing I want to show you is if we're working with a banner um, such as this, where the text is actually uh, in this format, if I type text into here, it doesn't go. And the reason it doesn't go is because that is an image, not uh, a, 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 an object, an image object inside of here. So if I want to put text onto here, the first thing I need to do is to make sure that it's big enough to actually handle the text I want to use. And then I can actually use uh, the text box here that would allow me to actually come down and click. And then I can some type in some text. And then I can actually bring that down and I could put it on top of here to show that I can actually put some text onto, onto this, uh, this box. And again, I can play about with this to choose the particular type of text that I actually want to use. I can adjust the, uh, the angle of this text if I wanted to uh, in slight ways. And again, I could actually group it into a, a, a similar area that I could actually use. Now I've also got available to me, uh, if I just move that text out of the way, if I, I'll put it over here, uh, I could have also got the ability, if I go um, onto insert, I've also got word art. Now word art would allow me to have a piece of text here in which I could type some text. And then I can actually sort of manipulate that text to bring it down um, I to, and I can reshape it by using the control buttons as we've done before. So I can bring it down and, and change the shape to make it fit inside of there and to add some interesting text. Now again, I can actually go onto my little box here. And as you can see, as I'm playing, I can actually choose the style of text that would actually work best inside of my box. So again, I can actually play about to choose a style of text that actually helps me to, to work best. Okay, 
So there we are, we've now got our, um, our text, we've got the ability to play with text and to produce some special effects. I hope you found that useful and I look forward to talking to you next Friday. Talk to you later. Cheers. Bye.